The Jeff Dubay Show on a wild Wednesday. We're at Bennett's, Bennett's Chop and Railhouse, West 7th, as we are wont to do on a Wednesday. I'm Jeff Dubay with Jason McGovern, Scott Schweitz, Tony Dean off fighting crime today. He is uh, a superhero, you know. He's, I think he's Batman. Uh, but Tony Dean is uh, he's out, uh, out, out working tonight. He's, uh, you know, one of St. Paul's uh, finest. So uh, we, we, we gladly sacrifice him for the, uh, for the safety of the East Siders on this night. And Ben Remington sits in for him. Ben, it's Ben Remington, correct? Yeah. Thanks for coming in. And uh, folks can read you at Wild Extra. Go ahead yep. and plug away. Yeah, I read for Wild Extra. Uh, WildExtra.com with no E. I also write at uh, Gone Puck Wild, which is the fan-sided Okay. Uh, affiliate so gunpuckwild.com as well it's it's amazing uh, how, how many wild uh, like the, the wild blogosphere is, it, it's <laughs> immense isn't it I mean seriously yeah it's it's uh, growing exponentially it's it's pretty huge but I mean I think it's cool and I think I think it's awesome that there's number one options for people and number two uh, a way for people to cut their teeth so yeah. I mean, when, you know, when, when Tony started writing uh, but Tony Dean started writing for um, uh, hockey balls or whatever where, is that where he started I know it's where he is now but uh, where we started I you know he would he would he would send me his stuff or, or tag me on, on Twitter and ask me to retweet and I didn't know him at all but I did because he was a marine he wasn't he was you know he's, he's fought overseas he's a, he's a marine he's a cop it's like how can I not give this guy a retweet <laughs> and uh, and uh, I didn't always take the time to, to read his stuff and I guess it was kind of ragged at the beginning and I know I'm not taking a shot at Tony but I mean <laughs> like people like I think you did a little bit I, well, no, I've told him this I've ta- we've talked about this I mean I had people like tweeting me saying dude you might want to be careful about who you, you're retweeting and, but now people love him I mean I mean it's like you know I'm just saying that you know the, the the blogosphere gives people a chance to cut their teeth. And, yeah. And, and, I mean now now he's straight up legit and people love him. So. Yeah, I've actually only been writing since September. Oh, yeah? So yeah, Did you I have a writing background or not really. Um, no, I went to school for marketing and and uh, I've I've wrote a lot in my f- spare time. I had my own you know like simple, easy create in five minutes Google blog, but that really wasn't sure. doing me a whole lot. And sure. So yeah, this this September I started writing for Gunpuck Wild and then Wild Extra we had launched. Uh, middle of October, just after the season opener, and uh, we've been going strong ever since. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, so check them out, uh, wildextra.com. That's extra without the e. Wild, it just it just saves you a little time typing it in. <laughs> so uh, anyway, the wild uh, after a, a homestand. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I told you so because I didn't really go out on uh, and, 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 and make, you know go on, on record. But I had a feeling. My, my my concern during this stretch, during this hot stretch, this en fuego two three month run. Was that at some point maybe it, it, it just it, it, it takes its toll? You know, you you expend a lot of energy, physically, emotionally, to make that kind of a charge. Maybe maybe you shoot the proverbial wad and you're a little you're a little flat going into the playoffs. They looked the part last week. I mean, that's they, 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 you know, uh, 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 three lackluster games, uh, two regulation losses, uh, one of us one of which a shutout and uh, and a shootout loss uh, on a home stand where it, you know, the, the the trademark of the last two three months to me, aside from Dubnik's goaltending, has been the fact that you can't beat this team back to back. I mean, they, they come out with, and, and they, they've lost games and then had to play, you know, travel back to back on the road against Nash, uh, Nashville, St. Louis. I mean, they've, they, I mean, they had to pull off some big time wins to avoid the back to back losses. I mean, they were absolutely clutch in that, in that off a loss scenario. They didn't look at this week. I mean, they, they had no fire coming off a couple of those losses. I, I didn't think. But considering last night, I mean, but that's, they, they, that's pull up, they pull yeah. off the back-to-back that's, that's with the travel end, that's the on the road. Of, that's the end of the Chicago. narrative. I guess there's yeah. a narrative in there. That's I, the I, stole I stole it. <laughs> that's the end of the narrative. But, but, it's, but, not a, it's not a tired. Is it a tired narrative? <laughs> well, not yet it's not. Not yet it's not. But, I mean, it, Tony. It, 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 I, I was hoping, too, that you know, you're know you getting some guys back at the right time. And I thought maybe that, that might be enough to shake things up enough you know, just to give people a wake-up call a little bit. And Zucker did return. Carter's been back for a while. I don't know what Cook's deal is. Or, or, or I think he's back tomorrow. Uh, but do they want him? I mean, how is he going to Not fit? really. I mean, seriously. I mean, he's got, <laughs> he's got playoff chops. I mean, yeah. he, that, 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 that's, the one thing he, that's the one thing he brings. Well, that's not the only thing he brings. I mean, he's, he's been a solid player for this. But, I mean, they're just so unbelievably deep up front right now. I don't know. What do you do, what do, you do with Matt Cook, Scott? I, I, mean, I don't know. I think you – I go back to you determine what you need in your lineup with who you're playing. If you need to have some grit, if you need to have somebody who can – and he's not a fighter, but he does have that – Agitative quality that which he is can, perfect for the playoffs because you can, don't want a fighter in the he playoffs. Can, and he can throw some bodies around, and there's not as I mean, there's not as much fighting in the playoffs. If any, I mean, people are there to to focus on what they're doing now. If he needs to be somebody that's going to be playing, uh, you know, a tougher, grittier role, 
maybe that's somebody you need. Uh, he's not going to be somebody that's going to protect, but he could get you know somebody off their game. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you need somebody like that, uh, maybe you put him in there. Does it more so than a Carter does? I mean, I would say an agitative role. Uh, they do not. While they play similar roles, they don't play the same role. I don't think that you can put one uh, against the other and say, you know what, that they're the same player. I, they're not. Especially the fact that you have a player that we discussed on Monday is the only player on the roster that has hoisted the cup. So yeah. that that says something. I mean, you have players like you know Leopold, uh, Parisi that have had Stanley Cup experience. But the, the broadcast team has more cups, for God's sake. Chorsky and, <laughs> Chorsky and Climber. Well, they, they, both, they both got one. Yeah, I mean, so even looking at that, I think that brings an element to a locker room to uh, uh, maybe to calm some of the younger guys down, even though they all have, you know, multiple years of, you know, playoff experience now. And good leadership. Yep, and, and you should have that across the locker room. But I don't think that you have a dynamic that it's going to be affected if you plug somebody in. Like we saw last night, I mean, Nino still played, but a reduced role after getting, you know, hit in the skate by uh, you know, by Dumba. Yeah. But, yeah. but then you plug right in. Right in front of us, by but, the way. Yeah, but then you plug, in, you plug in Zucker, like we talked about, in that line, perfect. Yeah. I mean, plug-and-play guy with the speed. Did well. Has none of the characteristics that those line mates have, by the way. I mean, that's like a big, strong, physical, grindy line. Yeah. Yeah, but then, but and then you but put it, com- it complements yeah. as well. I mean, I think he's a did. shooter, and, that, and that's yeah. the similarity between him and Nino. Yeah. And that's that line worked awesome with Nino on it because he's a Correct. shooter. He gets the puck, he wants to shoot. Zucker's the same way. Um, yeah, obviously, way different of a player, a little smaller, a little more speed. Yep. But shooter all the way, and that's and, the way and, it worked. And, and it looked like there was instant chemistry. Yeah. I mean, because because he and, he and uh, Stewart had not played together because he he got hurt before the deal. So I mean that was their first that was their first game together. They look like they've been playing together for years. And I think I mean I, I the comments that came on NBC last night were I mean how big of an impact Stewart has made since he came here. Yeah. I mean how and and even I mean you see I saw Lou Nahenny tweet out like you know uh, Fletcher easily executive of the year. I mean easily hands down with the the moves he's made. Well, the Stewart deal is such an under the radar. I move. mean exactly and so it and it uh, and he's he's gelled so well with his team. I mean and usually they said it you know uh, they said it last night. Usually a rental player comes in. Kind of is like, yeah, you know, whatever. Like we saw in Molson last year. Bergen I mean, Molson, I, yes, yeah, be, yes. They didn't, but, they, but they're not, oh, yeah. they're <laughs> not, uh, they're not going in, in, in playing, you know, the team role. They're not. They're just kind of there for themselves. I'm gonna do what I can. Um, I'm coming up on a contract year, whatever, you know. But he's really, you know, seemed to embrace the the team, yeah. and and others around him have have elevated their game, and and he's elevated his game. It's like the opposite. He was mailing it in in Buffalo, and all of a sudden this trade happened, and and, and it flipped a switch for him. I mean, he went the other way. Well, it's the same. I mean, if you want to put it akin to like a Dubnik, I mean, he goes in and yeah. he comes in and he sees it. It's it's revitalizing him as a player, and then you you're just you're just building off of other people they're building off you and just together uh the chemistry and just the excitement and everything is just really uh you know uh, infused across the lineup yeah and, and you know the way the playoffs are like uh, ben you, you look at a guy like stewart i mean you don't score a lot of pretty goals in the playoffs you score a lot of greasy yeah. goals i yep. mean you did you, you, you just gotta you just Garbage. gotta yeah exactly and then, i mean i look at stewart as the kind of guy uh you know who's gonna who's gonna be one of the guys uh, when when the run is over that's gonna have some of your biggest numbers in the postseason i think yeah, I think he's a, you know, that's what Fletcher said when they acquired him. They were looking to get some size, and uh, he's definitely something that the team has been missing. I mean, a lot of people questioned the move when we got it because they didn't quite understand you know, where he would play and whatnot, but he's that size right in front of the net. I mean, you got to have garbage goals in the playoffs, and we really don't have a guy that specializes in that. I mean, Parisi does a lot of work with hustle around the net, but he's not the biggest guy. And, uh, you know, Charlie Coyle plays like that on occasion, but for the most part he, he doesn't play like his frame. Basically. Well, and if, if you're going to plug a power forward into this lineup, he's got to be a guy who can skate. I mean, he's got to get up and down the ice. Yeah. This, is a, this is a fast team. And, and he's, shown he, he's shown he has Yes, yep. he's got the wheels. I mean, and he did it against the Blues. I mean, he did it against that, you know, the home game we had where he did, uh, you know, kind of break away and get down and, and, and make a move and put it right between, between the wickets, you know, yeah. and it was... I mean, it, it is something we don't see in a guy typically that size. I mean, it, it was brought in with the characteristics of the of the grittier forward, you know, that can fight if need be, but really will will be, uh, you know, somebody that'll uh, maybe cause other teams to not take liberties because of, you know, they could, in essence, he could take a liberty on another player, a skilled player on their team. So it it, it uh, he's brought way more than I think the casual fan thought he was going to be originally. Well, so are we done calling him a rental player? I mean, we're, we're not just assuming they're not going to sign. I, him. I said that right away. I said as soon as I saw the chemistry, I, I, he and Dubnik, in my mind, there's zero doubt that they'll be back next year. You're sure? One hundred I mean, percent. Yeah, there's no way you don't resign Dubnik. But one hundred percent that he's back because he brings a dynamic that we don't have on this team, and he likes it here. 
I mean, it's the same kind of thing. You what if he blows up in the playoffs? Kyle, talking about uh, uh, Stewart. I mean, he could blow up in the playoffs. I mean, he's 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 on a lot of people's. You're radar. talking about blow up like like in, in a, a good, good way, way. like yeah. just yeah. like explode, like like have a constant run. The prize of the free agency. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he could be the same, flavor of the month. Same thing. It depends on what he wants. Does yeah. he want to go to a team that's going to pay him that might be a a second tiered team? That he's like going to get more money, but what is he going to do? He's just going to go through the motions again and and fall back maybe into that into that situation he was. I mean, not playing to say, a Buffalo wore not him to down. Say, not to say Buffalo, but I mean some other it team did. that might be down. middle middle of the pack. But at what point in your career do you determine like what is what's important to me? Do I want to be in a high caliber team where we're going to have success and it's going to be fun, where you can clearly see that he's having fun with his line mates, or are you going to go to a team that? You're you're basically looked at as some guy that we're gonna pay you a bunch of money and you better perform, otherwise you're gonna get scrutinized by the media. People are gonna get mad at you. You know, you have that responsibility on your shoulders that you have to bear. Or do you play with somebody where hey, I'm gonna take a little less money, but I'm gonna be in a great situation yep. with a great team. Well, and guys, they, on, on NBC Sports last night they made. I think way too big of a deal out of out of Zucker's hockey sense and not going off sides. Oh, you look how brilliant he is. He <laughs> yes. didn't go off sides. Yes. Well, no shit, he didn't go off sides. I mean, <laughs> he took an angle. No yeah. shit. Yeah. But, but to me, uh, the, the, the beauty of that play, the subtlety of that play, is 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 having a guy like Stewart who knows when to make the pass. I mean, yeah. he, he held it. He held it just long enough. Let let uh, let Zucker get you know get, he started to angle away, drew the D. That was he, actually the impressive part. Yes. How he got open. I, I think it was Stewart and the pass. You're right. But I, I, the I think, timing. I think Stewart. I think Stewart. Uh, you know, holding as long as he did, drawing as much D as he did, and then feathering it right to the right to play uh, tape to tape. I mean, to me, that was the, the, the beauty of the play. Yeah, that was. I mean, it was it was huge. You know, taking waiting and taking advantage of the, both those defensemen being sucked over to him. You know, you got to be able to capitalize on those yeah. kind of mistakes. Especially congratulations on staying on side. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jason well, I mean, who, who knows? I mean, I would say congratulations for the refs not screwing it up. Well, yeah. the past wow. games we've, <laughs> we've had with offsides and icings and everything else that they've blown. I mean, that could have easily been a negated, uh, you know, awesome play with, you know, another uh, another blown call. But but there just aren't a lot of power forwards you want leading a two on one. You know, in this league, yeah. and, 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 and trust them to make the right decision and have the hands to pull it off. We've seen it before with you know the likes of a of a coil if he's if yeah. he's on I mean, the he's type had, of game that hands. if he's going to be, I mean, and he's he's a possession player. If he plays on his game that he can play and has shown he can play, he's a great possession guy that can play against the wall, hold that puck, mm-hmm. and you know, and dish it off. Nino has shown uh, glimpses of that as well. Uh, Koivu obviously is a, is a larger power type forward that, that can you know can hold the puck not as well. That's not his forte. Clearly, he's more of a defensive-minded forward uh, than anything. But, yeah, to have a guy with size that has a little bit of finesse, uh, of, I mean, it's a huge benefit. Yeah, and, and he's not old either. No, he's not old. And, and the, like, I go back to the fact that he does allow the team to play bigger. Um, we did get kind of pushed around a little bit in the uh, in the game that we were at. And and I think yeah, that... Yeah, we did. And but I, Winnipeg does that to us. Winnipeg and, and, and St. Louis. And I, and I don't know if it's just that we allow it or if, I mean, they're in our head or what's going on. I mean, Buffalo wasn't even there, but they were still pushing us around. And, it, yeah. and that... That kind of stuff bothers me because I know that we can we can match it, but we don't. Yeah. Like well, we, but by the way, with a week to go in the playoffs and the Stanley Cup champions barking at your heels, how about some props to Winnipeg for winning back to back in Minnesota and St. Louis? Yeah, that I mean, goes on the go- that goes on the goaltender. Seriously, that goaltender played out of his yeah. mind. Yeah. Yeah. Have a yeah, but he, out of his mind. Yeah, back to back night. Well, and by the way, a great call by the referee to take that goal away from Stasny last night. Did you see that? I mean, they're, they're, they're coming in. They're coming in basically on a two on one. Uh, St. Louis is. Stasny's charging up the slot, and uh, I don't know who the, the the defenseman is for Winnipeg, but he's, he's 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 you know he's checking him. He's trying to you know stay on him, and before the wing makes the pass, Stasny chops the stick out of the defenseman's hands, takes the pass and scores. Uh, but but the ref saw the slash, the penalty, blew the whistle. Sure. I mean the crowd's going nuts, the, the the sirens going, the foghorn, everything in St. Louis. They think they got a goal, and instead Stasny sits for two. And did he part, break the stick or just knock it out of his hands? Knocked it out of his hands. But it was, it was clearly a slash. And then, yeah. and then I did see I did see the replay with Bacchus sitting there just chirping away. You know, yeah. like, oh, what do you – I mean, it was a on. great call. You're not, you're not going to win that argument. I mean, no. clearly it was, a, it was yeah. an infraction and it needed to be called. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, – I saw Melrose – Scott Melrose's act on uh, Sports Center last night too. He said, you got to call that. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't not call that. I mean, he's, he wound up in alone on the goaltender because he took a guy's stick. I mean – uh, anyway, uh, another thing about uh, the game last night before we get our first break in. The, uh, through two periods, I was surprised to see the statistics because uh, they did, uh, on paper, favor Chicago. But I thought, for, I thought for 40 minutes we had the best chances. Didn't you think that we had the high-end opportunities, even though we were being outshot? 
I thought, I thought Crawford was making better saves. Possibly. I, being called yeah. out to make bigger saves. I know the ice didn't seem to be completely tilted one way or the other. No, but but no. I, I mean, I think we did have more uh, quality opportunities. And we didn't rope it up like we always do in back to back. Well, that travel. first period, again, it looked like they were they were, they were fighting slow. back. Yeah, yeah, it was counterattack <laughs> yeah, all the time. It, it, but, it would, I mean, they were, they're, they're slow to go early when they're, when they're back to back with travel. But they didn't. They didn't have to withstand like a fifteen to three shot flurry against them, like they like they have in these scenarios. No, it was it was closer. I mean, it was they had a slight shot advantage, but it was not you know anything just you know just completely ridiculous. And Chicago's Chicago's been playing well. They're playing for home ice. I mean, that's not a that, that's not a team that laid down. Yeah, I no. think it was good that we didn't get into a track meet with Chicago because you know when you get into a track meet with Chicago, you're you're gonna lose pretty often. I mean, even without Kane, they're they're, they're just so skilled. We saw that last night. I mean, it seemed like they inter intercepted every other outlet pass that we had. God, once once again, Pickle scores. A I'm so <laughs> that, I knew I hate him so much. I knew I was gonna make you mad. I hate him so Just much. It is, owns this us. This makes me angry, and I, it's weird because you love our Bickle and you hate their Bickle. Well, yeah. I mean, I, well, our Bickle has disappeared now. He's back. He's, he's been, been, Iowa, been hanging right? out in Iowa, but it's, but uh, he, he somehow has that knack to score against us, and he put it up in the corner, which is, I mean, I think it was a misplay, and I think at that point it was so late in the game. It's that we his were time up, of the year. We were up 2 nothing, and, nice and he did. Uh, yeah, but I think he doesn't get that shot if we play tighter in the last uh, couple minutes of the game. I mean, I think we did yeah. We did loosen up a little bit, and yeah. I think there was all that feel good, and I think they kind of you know, kind of saw it, and then, you know, but then as soon as they scored with still, you know, 90 seconds left. I was a little concerned. Oh, God. I mean, it, yeah, I think it's every wild fan was. Yeah, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't get a sniff after that. I was I was really impressed with that. No, they no, shut it down after that. the extra attacker, they didn't really yep. get anything set up. They didn't get anything going. We, we held them into the neutral zone, which was awesome. Yeah, it, it, it did surprise me. I, I thought once they got that goal, I thought, oh, Jesus, here we go. Yep. <laughs> and I had just said, like, you know, when it was two zip and we just missed the empty net, I was just said, God, this is a, this is a really impressive win, man. Going to, then they boom, pickle scores. I'm like, why don't I ever shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I had I think I had a tweet like ready to go, like, yeah, back in the playoff. But I'm like, nope, nope. don't click it. Not gonna hit that button. Don't, don't even do it. it. And hold off. It's a it's a wild Wednesday on the Jeff Dubay Show. We are at Bennett's Chop and Railhouse. If you haven't been here, you got to check it out. We were here Monday because it was a game night, and we wanted to have the Bennett's experience. Meaning, come on in, you know, sit down, have a nice steak, enjoy a beverage of your choice, and just uh, jump on the Bennett's shuttle and take it to the game. Uh, because this uh, Bennett's is a, it's on West Seventh, but it's just just barely east of 35E, like a couple blocks up 35E exit. So it's I mean it's not walking distance to the exit, but you don't need to be. Joe, I mean Joe drives that shuttle bus like a bat out of hell. <laughs> I mean it's unbelievable. I mean he's like a, he's I think he's got some NASCAR aspirations just after after taking the bus with him uh, down and back a couple of times on Monday. I mean it, it, the band does not mess around. Uh, he knows the shortcuts, and he's not afraid to run people over. He's not afraid to scare the hell out of people. You want to be, let me put it this way, you want to be on the Bennett's bus rather than <laughs> around the Bennett's bus. It, it, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, but it's a great way to get to the game. Have, come on in, have, have, a, have a steak, have a burger, a couple of, couple of libations, whatever, and then uh, and just jump that shuttle. We did it Monday, and we loved it, and we'll be doing it again. Um, you know, come playoff time. Scott, you're going to be doing the Bennett's experience for the playoffs, right? Sure. Absolutely. By the way, how cool is it that your season ticket is a credit card? I, I didn't know they did that. Yeah, That's well, awesome. I'll tell you what, it wasn't as cool early in the season when they had some bugs because every time I swiped that damn thing, it, it didn't work, and I had to go over, and they had to print my tickets out and everything huh. else. But now That's it works. Point. It actually it's it's pretty handy because you yeah. can uh, you just – have all your tickets on one card and swipe well, it. As yeah, you I walk think that's in. awesome. I mean, rather than having to punch them out every night, you know, you got like eighty or forty games. Well, it's a, what it was was it was a huge cost savings for them because yeah. they don't have to print yeah. out the colored ticket books anymore. Right. Yeah. And that when it when it's a a pain in the ass is when you want to give your tickets to somebody. Oh and, yeah. And oh, you right. have to like print out the giant paper tickets. Oh, sure. And you, then can you email it? Can you just do it by email? Yeah, but somebody? they still have to print out the same yeah. thing. So you have oh. to walk in with this like full, you know, eight and a half by eleven. I mean, like yeah, page and. Those are the things that people get all nervous that are, like, fake. Yeah. So they're, like, you know, that's... I bet it cuts down on scalping, too, by the way. Well, I mean, that's... But you. But Mike makes me more nervous because if, if they're scalping tickets that are these big sheets of paper, like, that's where people get a little, like, hey... That's I, when they can be I'm copies, not, yeah. I'm not buying those outside the X and then trying to walk in, and it's, like, they're the, for, he has three copies of these things. Right, right. And, hey, you told me your ticket broker told you that they're going back to uh, the days of the warming house here. Yeah, yeah. She told me, uh, and actually, I, I emailed with her today, uh, and she said that that they basically are sold out of playoff tickets. Like, basically, wow. they're going to awesome. release some before the game. That's wow. like, awesome. But as far as, like, like for ticket rush kind of thing, but otherwise, no. it's uh, They're basically done. Wow. That's wow. awesome. Which That's is really incredible considering, you know, rewind, you know, four years, and there was, I mean, maybe half the season ticket holders there are now. 
But we'll take a look around the league and also uh, you know, preview the upcoming playoffs now that the Wild are officially in for the third straight year. First time they've done it in franchise history. Uh, three straight years to the playoffs. This is Wild Wednesday, the Jeff DeBay Show. With Suhan Unfiltered, sports columnist for the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Jim Suhan presents in-depth conversations with the best writers and sports personalities in the area. Suhan brings professional journalism flavor without the verbal censoring. Find out what unfiltered really means only on the Alive and Social Network, SuhanUnfiltered.com. What are you drinking tonight, Jason? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly. I'm drinking the Lithbridge Hop Dish. It's pub talk from a Minnesotan perspective. I'm always really proud of where I'm from. I'm super proud of Minnesota, and I think Minneapolis is awesome. I think St. Paul is awesome. I think they're a really awesome cultural epicenter. With great local guests. So the other voice you hear in the room today is uh, Jerry Fagerberg from the City Pages talk about the uh, official Minnesota tall boy, which uh, your piece is on the cover of the City Pages. Today. It is on the cover. came out today. Talking movies. All right, you saw Boyhood. I need to hear what you thought. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Sports. A guy who was undrafted knew what was coming. And everything else you talk about at the pub. Let's not pretend we know what we're talking about. Well, what do you think I do every show? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason McGovern and Molly Burke. Listen at mnpubcast.com or subscribe on iTunes. We want to just find meaning in life. <laughs> Back at Bennett's. I'm in love. I'm in love. Jeff DeBay Show, Wild Wednesday. The rare Wild Wednesday where I don't get here early enough to have dinner before. It's just killing me. I mean, I, got, I was able to get a nap in, thank God. Uh, I said a nap, not a nap. I, don't, I, I do get naps in from time to time as well. But I got here early enough to, to at least uh, throw down the beef tips with that uh, mm. creamy horseradish. Oh, my God. So good. But I'm, I'm just, I can't wait for the show because I just cannot wait to can't take anything dive into the, sirloin. The Bernays sauce is fabulous. Yeah, if, if you're a chick. Whatever, dude. <laughs> man up. And get, some, get the horseradishes wow. for men, dude. That's not nice. Yeah, it is what it is. Dude. It's just time for you to man up. Why don't you grow up here, all right? God, that's so, hot, so, so soon he forgets. I just brought him to a game. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be at the next one. All right. Yeah, nice. No, the Bernays, Bernays is good, too. It is I mean, yeah, not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a creamy horseradish guy. Not gonna lie. The chip is sailed. Forget it. No recovery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the the wild clinch there, the playoff spot for the third time in three years. Uh, we've been, you know, obviously following the West pretty damn closely. Um, it, it just we were just talking about it off air. The uh, it seems like the Kings have been on the road forever. I mean, when they came here, they were at the end of a long roadie. I mean, they they, they were out east against New York and New York. Like, actually, they were in they were in uh, Madison Square Garden the night we were on the island. Uh, so, I mean, they were in New York when we were in New York. Then they went to the island when we came home. And uh, then they, uh, they, they, came here from, they came here from New York, from, from uh, Long Island. They came here. And then from here, they went back up to Canada. I mean, they had Edmonton last night. Uh, but nonetheless, it, 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 you can say what you want about schedule. I mean, you're, you've got a week to go in the season. You've got Stanley Cup chops. I mean, you twice in three years. And you lose listlessly, lifelessly to the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, I, I don't care where, I don't care if that game's on the moon. I mean, you got I mean, you can't, you can't lose four to two to that team right now. Right? And they play, they play Calgary tomorrow night. Yeah, in, yeah. Calgary. in, in, in Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. So basically, in playoff implications, of that one's huge. I mean, when you have both sides. You have, yeah, you yeah. got, you got Calgary, who's, I mean, they can either widen the gap to basically end their season mm-hmm. if they win, or if they do, uh, they pull back. Then I think they give them a little bit of a heartbeat. LA looks like a tired team right now. I mean, maybe they're just emotionally defeated. I mean, maybe it's just Probably. like what we. I mean, we should be we should be better in or a better place than we are. And it, it's. Uh, I mean, it's amazing that the Wild didn't have a little bit of that, considering how much they were winning and didn't seem to move in the standings. I mean, but kept winning. I mean, that it's sometimes tough to to stomach if you're if you're putting in all the effort but you're not seeing the results. All right. I mean, that that seems to be like a difficult thing to to swallow, but. For me, I think that might be what LA is feeling. Is maybe they're just like, you know what? Forget it. All, all we're doing isn't doing anything. We're could it have anything to do with all the extra games they play every year since they're in the playoffs every year? No. I mean, does <laughs> that no, you have a whole year, I mean, playing twenty extra. What are they playing? Twenty extra games a year when they, they go the all the way. Maximum last year leading up to the cup. yeah, but you got you got all the time. But it doesn't off matter at all. No, doesn't matter at all. all. The time off in the summer. I mean, these guys are going off and taking trips and doing whatever, and they're not That's doing cool. anything like. Around hockey, well, for, quick needed a rest you know, for some for, reason. For how long? I mean, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was stupid. I mean, it, to have to have quick basically out of the lineup, and it was the coach's call. That that seems like a real, real big mistake. 
We could sit there and play the, the ifs and buts and you know, yeah, the, hindsight, the, the 20, hindsight is twenty twenty. No, 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 I'm talking about a different topic here. The, the, the could have been and would have been of it all. Uh, we can't get to uh, complain too much about a team that's in the playoffs for the third straight year, especially when we think about where they were back in January, uh, when uh, when you deemed Dubnik, uh, Dubnik the savior. We didn't even know how to pronounce his name yet. You pronounced him the savior. Uh, but having said all that, if the Wild would have stayed, uh, you know, uh, winning at, uh, at the clip they were accustomed to last week at home, they'd be all over Chicago right now. I mean, they'd be they'd be, they'd be all over uh, the potential for home ice right now. I would play, I would go further than that and say if they would have done better last week and not dropped games against the the Avalanche and against Edmonton and against yeah. other people yeah. that were subpar teams back when, you would be having a different conversation that we would be at the top of the central and yeah. maybe even maybe. challenging for the Western Conference. Maybe. Yeah. Which is Absolutely ridiculous, considering that we Where were like were, second yeah. from the bottom, you know, in the Western. No, we're so 12th. we're twelve. I mean, and you don't want to. I mean, you can't say anything like, "Oh, look what we could have done." I mean, whatever. I mean, actually, maybe it's even a better spot considering how we play on the road. I mean, give us more road games. I mean, whatever. Well, and it, uh, again, looking at the, at the run that they're on and, and where they could be, and, and, and you know, just uh, kind of juggling things around. They're they're nights off. And when I say nights off, I mean games where they're a little flat, a little lifeless. Why are they always at home? I mean, this team, they don't, this team has got an 11-game road win streak, which is fucking outrageous. I mean, I know that they got a couple of them in shootouts, but for the most part, it's been legit. I mean, 11 in, and it is a team, by the way, that won one road game in two rounds of playoffs last year. Yeah. I'm not, I mean, I, I have no, no explanation for it. I mean, usually, you, you mean, we have – even their tagline this year is the home of the home ice advantage. Yeah, you're right. right. I mean, right. how, and they, how they're awful – They're not, they're not bad mean, at talking home. Talking about I mean, backhand and their, like, marketing staff, it's like, you know <laughs> – I mean, the home of the the uh, away advantage. I mean, is yeah. that uh, the road advantage? I mean, what? It's and I don't think we have a problem on home ice. That's not my point. It, it just uh, they're, they're, the uh, way they the way they've taken off at home uh, on the road is just hard to explain. I think you could probably attribute this last uh, run as to those four days off, like we talked about on Monday. I uh, think yeah. you, I think you have right. to attribute it to the to the you know the breather that the team had, and whether they just kind of were it was an un you know they a lack of being able to refocus now after they got in, or who knows what. But clearly last night they showed that they're back in form. So, I mean, I'm not concerned in regards to that. But if they, I mean, as long as they can keep that up, then whatever. I mean, now they're not going to have as many days off to lose their uh, their playing edge again. So, I think their struggles at home are due to the fans doing the wave. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Guys, you, guys, you guys hate Outlaw. the wave. Oh, I hate the wave. <laughs> God, I hate the wave. You know what, though? They got the, 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 talk about the marketing. They do have a great commercial right now. Where they they, they say they they they, spray, uh, they, uh, they ask the question, could one person, you know, make a difference? Right. And they show this one drunk rube get up in the <laughs> middle of a, of, a, of, a, of like a, a quiet crowd and start the Let's Go Wild chant by himself. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's always that it's guy. A, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great ad though because like yeah. then the, the rest of the section. That's not the only one. Up. Like they have one where it's a woman yeah. and she's taunting the goalie. Yeah. And it's basically oh, really? because yeah. so that one. they so play to, the Crawford chant. So, awesome. so to put it put it in perspective, when I went on the site to renew my tickets, like yeah. they ask what fan you are. Are you the goalie taunter? Are you the are you the Let's Go <laughs> Wild? Ch- I mean, there's like funny. four there's four like personas that you could be, <laughs> and the commercial for the woman is the is the goalie chanter, and she's like. She's like chanting Crawford, and then you can <laughs> like you just show her face, and I, I swear I think these are real people. They're just like yeah. happen to be oh, yeah. videotaping them. Yeah. Yeah. Because anytime you're I at the so XL, too. they'll put you people on notice. You could be in any sort of marketing campaign. Oh, you yeah. have no say. Oh yeah. Right. So no, you if you're that, if you're that like yeah. drunk woman who's like you know taunting Crawford, <laughs> and you're just like, oh, how did I end up on there? Oh, the time I had too many like rum and cokes. Oops. <laughs> and, and then I mean, but it's true. I mean, it, you get the it, Crawford. Sometimes the the goalie chance a little misplaced when they. I think they started taunting like a goalie that came in after they pulled their starter <laughs> and the and the, the drunk fans didn't realize like this is a different goal you oh idiots like God. they're like they're like like sipping the person i'm like they're not the original goal you idiots like so, stop it i want which, which persona did you check off i don't know like i made a high fiver i think it was like a high fiver guy and maybe uh, i'm like that guy yeah, yeah like like frat boy like you're like high five like high fiving and chest bumping and yeah i approve of the goalie chance i'm a fan of that um I'm not a huge fan of the Let's Go Wild chant because they managed to t- turn the name into two syllables. Yeah, I was going to say, Wild's a one-syllable <laughs> word. Yeah, I yeah, wrote an I'm article about well, it. Well, especially in the Winnipeg. I mean, as soon as we say it, then the, then the go idiot, go, idiot yeah. Winnipeg fans are like, I mean, granted, I, I, did, I did like the fact that they've limited the amount 
of Winnipeg fans <laughs> for that game. I was going to say, mean, how, many, how many tickets do they sell to those guys? I mean, it just seems like every Winnipeg no, game. No, it, it was far less. Okay. Because they did, That's a good and, sign. I, and I, I, I said this, they, they, yeah, limited, yeah. they limited the tickets sold to win, just like to Canada. Doing, to Canada because yeah. of they didn't want the last home game of the season yeah, being like overrun with the, with the Canadians. And that's basically like by design. So all the, I think all the people that bought tickets were on a secondary market. Because yeah. clearly can't control that. Right. How, how do you control? You know, Ticket, Ticketmaster. He basically controls so, it. But like people call your IP Canada, address. You tell them to go fuck your, themselves. Your IP address. Yeah, the, so, those yeah. not allow you to buy them. IP address, and I think it's like your uh, your. So like it's only where an you're, Where you're because you have to use a credit card. So yeah. Yeah. wherever your credit card is registered. Yeah, you'd have a zip code yeah. attached to that yep. too. Yeah. So you can't. I mean, it's the same way Florida's doing it. Okay. And I've heard of NFL but, but, but teams doing Florida this. What is Florida afraid of? I mean, who's going to invade Tampa Bay for the playoffs? I know. I'm just saying that's just what I'm <laughs> drawing. afraid of attendance in general. <laughs> no, seriously, I would, I would think they would sell tickets to, to anyone anybody. who would come. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean, I, it's not like you could do it. Like, you know, say we end up playing Chicago or what? I mean, or, you know, they're the most likely ones to come over as far as, like, yeah. but – it's not like you're gonna. I mean, there was a ton of Chicago fans when we played them in the playoffs. I mean, they no. they come for regular season games, yeah. Well, and not, the, the not playoffs, like it's like I mean, it's probably it, you know at that point before the Wild really have picked up momentum, it was easier for them to come over here. Yeah. Just like I heard somebody on Twitter basically like, I'm not gonna ticket to the X. I probably can get one cheaper flying to Nashville yeah. and re- and renting a hotel room and buying a ticket there. Wow. Yeah. Have we looked at what they're scalping for already, like on StubHub or anything? Oh, he's. I mean, I. I mean, the upper decks are I mean, probably... The, even the face value is high. Yeah. So, I mean, the scallop's going to be... I don't know. I mean, I, my tickets, I think, for, uh, for like, lower-level sides, I think, went up, like, like to 115 well, for I the mean, first round. Yeah, I mean, his seats, by the way, are third row, face-off dot, where the Wild score first and third period. So, I mean, it's, it's, high, it's high rent. Not bad. It's high rent. I mean, you got to deal with the, uh, with the visiting uh, team bench, you know, leaning over and getting in your way, but... Yeah, you do have yeah, that view, but uh, I mean, nothing, nothing beats when, uh, like, last year in the playoffs, like I was, my, my buddy and I were on the front page, of, like the Pioneer Press. I mean, yeah. we basically nice. were in the background after Parisi's goals. That was pretty sweet. So, yeah. Yeah. but, but yeah, I mean, you, you do, you, you take the uh, the lack of view in that other end, but whatever. You can uh, go I mean, for one eighty nine, by the me. way, on StubHub. Uh, okay. Upper for, deck. for the first wild, t- I mean, just the cheapest wild playoff ticket I can find is one eighty nine. Wow, that's a so lot for the that's first that's for that's those that's upper deck. Yeah. <laughs> could be standing room. That's too. probably actually standing room. So right. if you could stand room upper deck, I mean, you are you are basically. I mean, you better bring your tissues with you because you're yeah. gonna get some bloody nose. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's we're still talking 200. Pounds. Hell, at that yeah. point, I mean, stay stay at home or watch it in the bar. I mean, bar because upper, upper you lower are side. so high. I mean, it might even. I don't know, whatever. I don't it, mind. The well, ones I like the press up, box. up the highest. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind, mind the, the ones really? on the bar actually. Up on the yeah, I don't mind those either. Yeah, they're not bad. I don't mind those either. Well, you said you like being way up there. Did somebody say they like it from the? You said you liked from the press box because you got like a good view. Did you say that? The press box is a little freaky for me. I it's very steep up there. Yeah, my my legs, I get like wobbly knees up there. I get like vertigo. I'm serious. My first, my first, my first. Like if I sit in the press box and look out, you know they like hang TVs out over the edge. Yeah, yeah. They're like mounted and, they, and there's like nothing. If I like sit there and fixate on the TV, I have to like sit down. <laughs> and the verticals, <laughs> the verticals on the second deck seats are really yeah, steep, so especially in the corners. Too. The corners yeah. are when you get up going up and down the aisles, it gets. I mean, you have to really be careful because I mean, if especially because the the thing I loved about the second deck is when I first had tickets, those are like the the blue collar like oh, yeah. drunk rube fans. I mean, they're the ones that are just great. Yeah. And so those are the ones that like they'll they'll pour on too many beers and like you'll Not a lot get of to the steps and it's like oh oh like you know they might take a misstep and go barreling down the stairs. Well, I mean you, you know how steep it is when they have to put bars in front of the seats. <laughs> yeah, I mean like you were just talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's like, they're afraid you're going to jump up and start, you know, just tumble the fact. And, you know, so you got an avalanche coming off the top deck into the club level. But I think there was a guy, there was a guy behind me in my first season up there, and he, he would wear the Jason mask. He had like a green wig, Jeez. and he had like the straight up like leather Cooper, like blocker and mitt. Like he basically had what like. room. Oh, yeah. But his wife, his wife would dress in like, if, if it didn't have jersey, she would have like a, a, jer- a, a ref jersey. And black pants, Jesus. and like black glasses, and a, so like and, a blind, and, a, and a blind cane. I mean, she would basically be in a blind <laughs> wow. rep, and he would be like the guy with like the Jason mask and like the red fro. And I'm like, look at these two. I'm like, yeah, it was like Halloween, but that was every oh, game. That's funny. That's hey, funny. I think he wrote. He wrote for uh, uh, Gone Puck Wild for yeah. a while. Okay. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and then went home and did a little role playing. <laughs> It got a little crazy. <laughs> got a little crazy. Oh. No, don't take the mask off. Don't take the mask yeah, off. Yeah, leave, leave man. <laughs> you digress. <laughs> uh, I, but oh. it, looking looking at the Western Conference, we, we were sitting talking about LA and um, and the potential disappointment of not making the playoffs with the defending Stanley Cup champion. That is still loaded talent wise. 
who's a bigger disappointment in the West, L.A. or San Jose? I mean, I think it's fucking hilarious, by the way, that the, that the stadium series teams are both going to miss the playoffs. I, <laughs> nice job, NHL yeah. for marketing. Well, I would say this. Way to, way to pick the right teams. I'm not surprised at all by San Jose because really? everybody everybody knows that they have – I mean, they're tanks. Talk about Staylock. Don't, don't, don't piss off Joe. Well, that has nothing to do with him. Big Staylock guy. Yeah. It, that's, that's from the top down. I mean, they're yeah. tank city. I mean, they just have a horrible organizational yeah. structure. Well, and I mean, I feel bad like because I'm, I'm a Burns fan. I mean, to the core, would love if he ended up coming back here. I mean, just he's a great guy, great player. But he has to be like, man, I may just – I mean, granted, he's living in California, but, I mean, think about it. Man, did I make a bad choice? Like, well, st- sticking around and – traded. Re- re- but he re-signed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose. So, did I make a bad choice sticking around here as opposed to, hey, you just traded me. Maybe I should turn around about face and get back here as soon as I can. Granted, we didn't have the people we have at this point, but right. maybe next go-around, we'll, we'll see. Well, it's not hockey wasteland. I mean, they're typically competitive, and they have a good yeah. fan base. I mean, it's not like you're in Buffalo. Oh, but it's still a shit show there. I mean, yeah. with the GM calling oh. out Joe Thornton and Joe Thornton telling the GM to shut the F up. Yeah, yeah. Then they yank the CF of Joe Thornton for no apparent reason whatsoever, and then he gets emotional. It, it just, I mean, that thing's then the, been... Then the GM had tried to cover it up, and yeah. Joe, Joe Thornton's like, it's not true. I yeah. mean, it, it's, just, it's just so contentious. Yeah, I, I just, that, it's no surprise. I, I'm I'm with you. I'm I'm not all that surprised that 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 just kind of the, the the wheels came off of that thing because they just there's no stability there, and and LA is the, definitely the most shocking to me because I mean the talent that team has top to bottom is pretty incredible. But I don't think there's a single team in the Western Conference that wanted to see them in the playoffs. So well, of course, and think about it. This we talked about it earlier. It's like they have a goaltender that can you know can yes. basically be a game changer. Yeah. yeah. I mean they have and from the top down you have. You have defensemen like Dowdy. I mean, you have forwards that, I mean, Kopitar and Gabrick. I mean, you have mm-hmm. solid, solid talent yeah. throughout that entire lineup. And for some reason. But Gabrick's not going to matter to the playoffs, basically. No, but I mean, <laughs> but my point is, is like, he still is is a talented player. Yeah. yeah. But no, he's huge in the play. But he's, and, and Kopitar's a talented player. And I mean, yes, he is. Uh, I mean, you Maybe could just go. Un- he might be the most underrated forward in the league. You just go from the top, I mean, from the top down. I mean, I think the game that I saw, they actually even brought back, like, you know, Richards for, like, a game. Yeah, yeah and, he came back to face And right. he was there for, like, a day and a half. And they're yeah. like, well, you still suck, so maybe yeah. we should <laughs> send you back down. But it's it's funny how, I mean, you have a team with that good a talent that has been a real surprise. But, I mean, luckily for San Jose fans, they didn't make the playoffs because then they would have got their, you know, hopes up and then got crushed <laughs> again, sadly. Which is ironic because when they were still a fledgling organization, I remember them being like a dangerous low seed, like taking out Detroit in the first round, yeah. like, like when Detroit was a one seed. I mean, so they, I mean, it used to be, you know, the, the roles have kind of flipped a little bit for them. I mean, they used to be, they, they used to be just the up and comer, the plucky upstart, the low seed. Yeah, now they're pretty much synonymous with first round exits. Yeah, I seriously. Mean, it, when, it, you, you, when you think of a team failing in the playoffs, you, you pretty much go to them in the Joe Thornton area, which is you know the last what ten you know uh, years or so, and. And uh, you know the Blues maybe might take over that mantle. I was gonna. Uh, <laughs> you mean, you mean, you do like the Blues. The Blues have basically pulled that moniker out of the which is because yeah. it, it is it is that's their way. I mean, the Blues have really been disappointing come playoff yeah. time. Well, sure. it, it, it's bizarre too because the Blues seem to me to be constructed for the postseason. Tough, yeah. physical, gritty, good, you know, big power forwards. You know, guys who crash, guys who get greasy goals. And they, I mean, I would I would trust them in the postseason, being you know, based on their uh, makeup. I Goal. think the thing that they're missing is goaltending. Goaltending though. instability. Yeah, would Brian be Elliott is good. At, but it just he obviously hasn't proven it yet and, and they thought so little of him last year that, that they you know they went with Miller uh, when they dealt Halak and epic and fail. Yeah, that that did not work out well. So their deal and I think that maybe is a little bit of San Jose's deal too, because Auntie Niemi was kind of uh, you know, he was kind of along for the ride with Chicago when they won the title. Did you see what Halak did last night, by the way? Yeah, that goal. Oh my god. Oh with I six mean, they, seconds. They left. scored they scored twice. Oh, they pulled a goalie. Brutal. The Islanders pull the goalie and score twice to tie the game in the final two minutes. Yeah. Then he gives up like a center ice goal with three seconds oh, left. Oh, it was bad. And so they didn't even get it to overtime. It was bad. I mean he crossed the guy crossed the blue line and, oh, it was and just flicked softy. it in. Yeah. It was just ridiculous. A the, it was the, bad. the bench, I mean you could just see the smoke coming out of yeah. the out of, out of the coach's ears. I think they're pretty well in the playoffs. That's, they are. That's the only matchup that you can really count on right now is them and the Caps, but still, that's that's embarrassing. I mean, when you pull the goal and you score twice to tie a game, yeah. and then he gives up. It was it was, it was was pretty bad. But he's had a hell of a year. I mean, he's he's, he's not the same guy that he was in St. No, Louis. No, yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's having a Did you guys see the uh, Senators game last night, the end of that? Uh, that was oh. incredible as well. And, and, and again, and that's, I mean, Melrose was all over this last night. Uh, you're Pittsburgh. You're on the road. You got to get this game. You score ten seconds in, yeah. and they score off the opening faceoff. Yeah. Nobody scores off the opening face. Fastest goal in uh, Sidney Crosby's career. They, they score ten seconds in. They build a three nothing lead, and they lose in overtime. I mean, it, 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 a team that has not be giving away points right now. 
It happens though. I mean, but it's, Ottawa's it's, got a chance to make three, the playoffs. Three yeah. nothing lead is different than it. I mean, the two the two no, or the two point goal lead is the the worst in hockey. I mean, that's the one that you get. You basically get comfortable, and then you realize like, oh, you know, they scored one, they could score two, and then you lose the momentum, and that's that's why they call it the worst lead in hockey. Yeah. But like what did, I said, like that's a bogus. Didn't Kevin Gorg win the PST for making that statement? But that, that two goal leads that, the that most. For, you don't want to I mean, go up two zero on Chicago. <laughs> Isn't that how he won <laughs> that? But basically, it, it is it is true because it, I, mean, I don't look know. At, you get you get you, up by two goals. You never turn down a two goal lead. Yeah, That's no, you thing. don't. But, it, but it's it's what happens. You like get comfortable. You, get confident, you start yeah. playing like we start last. You night. start playing your defensive trap game, and you you stop you stop pushing and stop taking chances, and before you know it, that that ice tilts, and then. It's hard to get well, the momentum wild, back. The Wild have blown a couple of three nothing leads this year. Yeah, I mean in in New York. New York, very well, yeah, you'll never forget that New York one. No, yeah. no, that was actually funny because that was the we did a launch party for Wild Extra, so that was the first time any of us writers met each other, and uh, that was <laughs> that very was a pretty horrific meeting. experience. Yeah. yeah, like hey, how you doing? We got this one in the bag. It's great, good times, and whatnot, and then. You everybody, know, the, everybody's cheers and yeah, having, oh, it's just you know, hockey nice hugs going on, yeah, and, then, and then just the horror, just the silence falls upon the room as they cough up <laughs> five goals in the third period. That's yeah. Let's take our final break. Come back. We clear to the top. It is uh, a wild Wednesday. Jeff Dubay show. We're at Bennett's West Seventh. Uh, what we determine here? Victoria? Is that what it is? Yeah. West Seventh yeah. and Victoria. Uh, come on in. It's a fantastic place for steaks, chops. Uh, your favorite beverage, whatever. Grab the grab the shuttle bus to the playoffs. It's going to be a great scene down here uh, when we roll into the postseason. Reach for this one. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to go back online, let's turn it on. Kind of. <laughs> that took a very PG direction. Along comes this hit show. I'm constantly burping on stage. Hey, you heard about Madonna, right? <laughs> <laughs> Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. Had she fallen to the ground and her eyes rolled into the back of her head, what would you, Tim Mahoney, have done? I, I'd have tried to make out with her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Get in line. <laughs> the Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck airs live daily, 9.30 to 10.30, on the Alive and Social Network. Ever uh, swallowed a bug or choke like Courtney on stage? Yeah. I- <laughs> I meant to do this. Hi, everybody. This is Alyssa. And this is Liz. And we're with The Focus Radio. Where our focus is to bring you resources to grow your business and double your income. Join us on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. Central Time. TheFocusRadio.com. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. Where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride. Till I get to the bottom. We're back. Jeff Dubay Show, Wild Wednesday. Jeff Dubay, Scott Schweitz, Ben Remington, Jason McGovern. Uh, talking, you know, playoff scenarios and such. And, uh, we all, I think, agree. Uh, perfect case scenario for the Wild would be Nashville first round, correct? I mean, that's kind of the no-brainer it's right ideal, now. ideal, yeah. So, so, but Which is that, scary. <laughs> I think that's always scary when you're that... Like we all think I that's the team. And I mean, that's not when, a good thing. When, and I've, I've talked about this on the show before. When you, you know, like teams, uh, you know, yeah, well, let's say they, they they advance early, and then people start asking, uh, you know, media asks, you know, do you have any preference? Who you get in the next round, or the playoffs are starting? Who do you get in the first round? When when they say no, we don't really care. It, I don't think it's just lip service. I mean, number one, you're not you don't want to get billboard material. But I really do believe. That if you make up your mind that you want a team and you get that team, you lose your edge. Yep. You don't. You've lost I, an edge. I truly think it's it's not lip service because no, it's not at all. It's going to be one of three teams. Yep. I mean, there's Anaheim plays tomorrow night against the Stars, and they basically have enough separation that they will not drop down to face you know the, the first wild card spot. So they're not going to get overtaken by the Central to have like the top person in the West be coming from the Central. I think it pretty much is solidified. They're going to be the top person in the West, thus facing the second wild card. So. We're going to face Nashville or the Blues most likely. I mean, I think it would take a really surprising, uh, you know, change of events to have um, Chicago. I think the only thing Chicago is going to do maybe is is uh, leapfrog you know, somebody up and it's going to be switching switch positions for home ice. Yeah, yep. So it, we're going to play probably either Nashville or the Blues. But honestly, any three of them doesn't matter. I mean, I don't think they care because they've shown they can beat them at home and on the road, and they have, I'd say they're, they're – even though they're the lower seed, they should have probably the you know be the favored. You think so? I would I would think so. I mean, I, who, put it this way: mentally, who do you think cares more? 
You think those three are sitting around like, shit, I hope I don't get the wild. Oh, or, you yeah. think the, or you think the wild are like, I hope I don't get one of them? No. I mean, the wild don't but, care. They're the ones that are like, yeah. uh, if we moved around, we wouldn't have to face them. I agree. And, I agree. And that's big when it comes, and I said it the other day, it comes to all about mental uh, perception of like who you're playing. Uh, I don't want to face them. Well, as soon as you have that. Teams at the top of the West don't want the Wild. I, I, I think that's absolutely given. But you know what? The way things have been going lately, I'm not sure anybody wants Winnipeg either. I mean, yeah. Winnipeg's no joke. They're Maybe not. Too. No, I mean, but, but yeah, the point is. I mean, and they're a big physical team that, that looks like they're built for playoffs. Well, and they're going to end up in that Western, that Pacific Division bracket too. Yeah. So they're going to face the, the Ducks most likely in the first round. And then they have you know, either the Canucks or the Flames in the second round, and that's that's a pretty favorable matchup for them, I think. Is bracket is that new for for hockey? Didn't they used to reseed or not? Like no, it'll, it'll, no, it'll, it'll basically. It goes by I, know I know it's a bracket now, but I mean, in the old format, didn't did they reseed each round, like in the NFL? Like, uh, like if there was an upset, I believe they did. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. Did, it when did it was just top yeah. eight, I believe so they was, did. Yeah, it so, did reseed yeah, every round. So there was yeah. so there was no bracket. The, the bracket thing is new. No, 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 and that does make for a you know sometimes a more difficult. If you're constantly have to play in the higher seed and you're constantly yeah. being that, I mean, yeah. if you're lower, you're always going to end up being, you know, the the visiting team. Yeah. But still, you you're set within that yeah. Pacific you could, you, you could or that Central. But you could, yeah, you could catch a break. Now, like the the Wild as a low seed, could uh, you know could wind up playing a low seed in the second round. I mean, which which was the impossible before. No, no, the Wild will end up playing basically like the Wild would never play Winnipeg. No. The, well, wild, the wild either would the no, Wild the Wild will play like, let's put it in perspective. Like if they played Nashville. And then but the Blues get, play Chicago. Right. Then we would still be the low seed in the following round. Because They're playing two out of those three teams for sure if they right. make it two but, but my point is the, the, you, you don't necessarily – as an eight, seven or eight seed, if you do pull off a first-round upset in, in the old format, you're going to play the highest seed remaining. All right. I mean, at least that's not the case. So anymore. instead of facing the yeah, Ducks, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, the, ab- the abs- Hawks, you're right, right, a lower seed, not yeah. lower than you. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Now, put it this way. If, you, if it plays out the way it does – I mean, that's the way forward thinking. But it gets to the Western Conference Finals, and, and Winnipeg runs the Pacific, oh. and we run the Central. We would be the home team yeah. Yeah. and have a home ice advantage because we're the seventh and they're the eighth. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, and obviously that I mean that be a, you know tough situation considering how we play this team. But can you it, imagine the atmosphere in the building? That, oh God! I mean, insane. you want to talk about limiting tickets? <laughs> they would do. They would do everything. I mean, they would probably be border patrol of like somehow, like you know, planting drugs to make sure they can't get down here. Well, and, <laughs> yeah, we, can, we, can, we can pull some stuff at the border. I know. I know some people. I'm not proud, but I know some people. Uh, the the, the yeah, uh, one server we had the other day. She worked for like the BCA. We should probably work something out with criminal apprehension. Yeah. Well, yes, there you go. That's there, right. There's our customs. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the um. When you look at, 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 at you know the playoffs and, and down the road and who could be here and who wouldn't be here, you know, we're always talking about who's a potential rival. You're trying to build rivalries, you yep. know, for a team that's still somewhat fledgling, just over ten years in the league. And to me, you know, when you look back at what the Stars had with Chicago, with Detroit, with St. Louis, rivalries are built in the postseason. I mean, that's that's why people tried to latch on to Vancouver early, you know, as as a, as a rival, uh, you know, because we took them out. You know, Colorado. I think. I think. You know, things are testy right now with Colorado because of what's happening in the playoffs. What is, is, is everybody freaked what out about? What the hell is that noise? What noise are you talking about? <laughs> you don't hear that? No. I'm just, just asking her if she can hear it. It's like, it's it's like, like, a cell it's phone like somebody has like a, it's, it's like a, I'm on a submarine and we're doing like sonar. Or sonar. Yes. yes. <laughs> my ringer's off, dude. And yeah, I'm checking every level. I'm looking. It's not my phone. Maybe. I got that turned down. I don't know what the hell that is, but is it's gone? freaking me out. No, it's, it's still there. Well, I guess all right. I do still hear it. What is this, a beautiful mind? Are you psychotic? No. All right. All sorry. right. Now right. I, I heard right. it for right. a second. But sorry, there was sorry. something yeah. on sorry, there. Sorry, listeners. Freaking oh. me out. I was like on the hunt for Red October. <laughs> yeah, I got going back and forth. Like, what the hell is Sean that? Connery to come over the mic and be like, <laughs> like gum rats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. I mean, robbery. Well, robbery Sean Connery not, in the Russian accent will do that it, to you. By the way, I can do a, ba- started, a badass Sean Connery. And I always get Hunt for an October and Crimson Tide mixed up. So I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I got these two movies like melding in my mind right now. And I've How got, can you get those? I've got, like, I've got like Denzel Washington you know, hunting down to Sean Connery. Oh, yeah, you, got, you got Denzel and, Washington is like, it's like mutiny. The and, then you got, and then you got like the Ruskies trying to like defect. They're I mean, it's movie. totally different. No, they're the same movie. They're both on a submarine. You got Alec, well, for one thing, uh, Alec Baldwin is not Jack Ryan. That still freaks me out. Up. Well, it is or not. I mean, whatever. I, I mean, mean, you just are you mad I mean, because same character, Harrison right? Ford's not it's the a, guy? Yes, it's a, it's a, you got to keep. You got to some continuity. He has, he has kind of a bit role in there, though. I mean, clearly, like the predominant role is the fact that you know John Connery is like trying to defect and oh, yeah. find out some scheme to get his crew off the boat. I mean, that's mm-hmm. well. By the way, that's a that's a badass movie. That's a Sunday afternoon yes. movie. If it's on, I don't care what. 
hard it is. I'll stop and I'll watch it. I believe it's still on Netflix. I mean, just, you know, eight bucks a month, dude. I mean, you're talking BMWs. You can afford it. It's not that big a deal. If there is one on a, on a cruise like the Baltic, and I'm like, the one thing I want to bring the back, Baltic? give me give me a Ruski hat. Give me one of those, like, furry-ass hats yes. with the thing. I got one, and it's I love it. Really? Oh, yeah. Nice. I, I think I watched the what movie with it on. on the Baltic? <laughs> what, did, what, did they have a day trip to Bosnia? I mean, what, what the, where is the Baltic? Well, it's like north. I don't know. But, the they, they do cruises around Alaska and through Norway well, too. Yeah, I know that. I know they, they, they start, start, they start they, oh, they, you look at a moose or something. They hit all like the <laughs> other stuff at like the Baltic. Up, up by like Denmark and stuff. Yeah, Copenhagen. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we yeah, got, you know my my European geography is a little sketchy. I mean, I, I used to think that you know maybe the fin- like, I used to think of Scandinavians as being a little soft, and then you know, a buddy might say, "Are you kidding me? Finland held off the Soviet Union militarily speaking for like fifty years. They're not soft." I'm like Finland's next to Russia. Jesus Christ! Give me a map. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not, not that far away. Yeah. Well, no, no they no, they're, no, they're, they're right on the border. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, the finger country. Yeah, yeah, just seriously, Finland. Finland's badass. They held off to the Soviets for many, many years. So I got, I got wild ones there. I got born up. <laughs> wild I got born up. I got born up on my European geography. There's very little doubt about that. It oh. doesn't take a whole lot to get us derailed here. <laughs> but but back, back to the point that uh, we are trying to make. The rivalries are built in the postseason. That's why I mean it's a long, the longest of long shots. But it'd be really, it would be pretty cool if the, if the Wild in Winnipeg did find a way to have their paths cross. I mean, that's that's how you build rivalries. Yeah, I, think, I was going to say, in a, in a perfect world, the best outdoor game would probably have been between those teams. Yeah. yeah. But but clearly, yeah. there's no national interest no, in that. more no, people no, outside nobody, of those nobody markets Nobody cares watch. about it. And, and the Wild can't have their own outdoor game without being, like, NHL sanctioned. Like, yeah. NHL runs that. I mean, they run the stadium series, and they needed somebody – that's going to draw national attention, like Chicago. I think the NHL really wanted to give us Dallas because of the whole like stars you know, coming home, old stars, yeah. and you know, wild and all that stuff. There, or they were thinking. I think Colorado was in the mix after we had that, you know, kind of, uh, you know, contentious playoff, and there was you know a lot of anger between the the teams and all that. I mean, I think that was in the mix. But yeah, I mean, geographically, that'd be a perfect game is to have you know Winnipeg. Probably half the you know half the city would drive down here. Yeah. Well, eventually, there's going to be 75 of them a year. So right. well, it'll happen. Don't worry. Yeah, and I, and I think when I mean, as far the as direction rivalries, they're going. rivalries go, I think you need some geography in, in your favor there. I mean, because, yeah, we had that thing with Vancouver for, what, three years? You know, it was where that was a real hot ticket, and then that kind of fizzled out, and then we changed divisions, and that really fizzled out. Um, and Colorado, everyone everyone kind of pined for that after the playoffs last year, but, I mean, obviously with them missing the playoffs, there's not much going on. But Chicago well, that doesn't matter to the NHL. I mean, I guess right. San Jose, LA was their stadium series game yeah. this year. But uh, – I think Chicago and Winnipeg are, are really good shots, you know, f- to, to really build, uh, a, you know, a hated rivalry yeah. like like yeah. the Stars and, and Hawks had because of the proximity. You got six hours, seven hours either way, you know, eight hours tops uh, versus, you know, a cross-country flight to Vancouver or Colorado and, and all that kind of stuff. You got to have that proximity, really I get the blood boiling. I know some people got bored with it, uh, with, the, with the old format, but, the, you know, when I was, I mean, this was before any year, any year time, but like, like when I was in high school, you, know, the, you had the playoffs set up where you played your first two rounds in division, yeah. period. I mean, it was the top four teams from, from the Norris. I mean, it was, so you have, you're either getting Detroit, St. Louis, or Chicago in the first round. Then you get the winner of the other series in the second round. So you're seeing the same two teams in the playoffs every year. And I loved it. I mean, it, it's just it, it built so much bad blood. I mean, that's, that's, that's what the, they were going that's for. That's why you hated Secord. That's why you hated Savard. That's why you hated Murray Bannerman, for God's sake. That guy sounds like a newsman, not a goalie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, seriously. I think, people, I think people don't like I mean, Chicago just from the past couple playoffs. But, I mean, when it comes to teams, like, I, I hate Winnipeg fans. I hate. I mean, I hate. <laughs> well, that's how I. I, I don't. Yeah. I mean, that's how I hate it. Was so in North so Dakota. annoying. I mean, yeah. you had those idiots on the glass that were yelling the Go Jets Go, and I just wanted to be like, get the hell out of my building. Yeah. Well, that's 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 where my hatred began for Wisconsin and North Dakota. I mean, going to games like, who the fuck are these people, and why can't they just go home? I mean, it's it, it does. Get, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, you talk about limiting ticket sales. I believe uh, Mariucci put something in, in in place a few years ago where if you bought single game Minnesota North Dakota, you also had to buy. Single game Minnesota last game. Oh, that's like what the Vikings do. Yeah, the Vikings basically do, they that do that a lot. For, too, yeah. You know, if you, you buy Packers Bay tickets, you've got to buy other ones. And yeah. the Wild do it's, a little it's, ticket it's pack it's where smart. they'll sell if you want this individual game, you have to buy like these three other ones. Yeah. But so the, they pro- do, the they problem do with that is, though, is these, you know, the, 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 the idiots from North Dakota, they still bought them up, yeah. and then you have no crowd for the Anchorage game. Right. Or <laughs> do they just resell their tickets? Yeah, yeah. Well, that too. That too. But whatever. I mean, it is to eBay. Their money spends. What the hell? No, just whatever. But on that rivalry tip, though, last night, how many times did the guy on NBC? say that there was no checking in that game 
I mean, it was it was not a physical game for the first two and a half I'm, periods. I'm okay with that. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not yeah. saying it's a bad thing, but I'm saying that Chicago and Minnesota don't have that hatred like they kind of do with Colorado and they kind of do with they're Winnipeg. They're both speed skill possession teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think they're, they're not teams gritty. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It's not they're a probably, blues game or a Jets yeah, game. They're, probably, yeah. they're built similar as far as like... St. Louis, Winnipeg, you better have paramedics standing. Oh, by. my God. Yes. Well, <laughs> if, if St. Louis is playing their physical game. A couple times we've seen they them not... They've seen them not come out. But... The new the new team that, that is you know the the rougher you know tougher team is Winnipeg. I mean yeah. they, I mean like again without Buffalo. Yeah, without. I mean him. just he's back now. Just too, going, I mean running everybody. I well, mean he's a criminal. I mean they they had their I mean most folk here started out as criminal. not just not just Buffalo but I mean there Slot was how many people do we see like just coming at people with their arms up? Do you think Dustin Buffalo plays with slot cars on the road in his hotel room? <laughs> do, you beat, do you think he beats up soda machines? Awesome. Slap, shot, slap shot reference. Put some puts, puts, puts puts <laughs> foil on. Oh, yeah. He, he might foil up. He actually might foil up. Well, at least up. he's not that guy that went to the box to play with himself, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the drunk guy who pissed himself along the board. <laughs> Puffy. Uh, just a, a few minutes left. We, we look at the week that's uh, that's ahead. you got games against Nashville, St. Louis. Uh, which, which is first, Nashville or St. Louis? Nashville. Nashville then to St. Louis. Yep. Do, you, do you have to get Kemper one game? He hasn't played for months, and you're—I and, mean, not to not to throw the all-time whammy into this thing, but if, like, what if Dubnik stubs a toe getting out of the tub or something? I mean, th- yeah. th- there's a possibility that Kemper might have to play at some well, point. I, t- I told you before the, the game. before the show, it was the first time I I saw a quote from Dubnik that said, "Now I'll maybe get a night off." I mean, it was, I've never seen something yeah. like that before. Yeah. That him even hinting at wanting a night yeah. off. I yeah. think that was a little tongue in cheek, but I yeah. mean, <laughs> I, maybe it was tongue in cheek, but still, it was like the first time I you ever yeah. like. Get, Kem- uh, get uh, Kemper a tune-up, though. Seriously, just in case. Yeah. Don't you think? I think they'll give Kemper tomorrow night in Nashville, and, and then you get Dubnik on Saturday night, get him nice and warm, and yeah, then he's got sense. they got the four day the dreaded four day layoff before the playoffs start next Wednesday. Yeah, that didn't do us any good last time. Four day layoff. No, I mean, it, it, maybe you do. Maybe you get him in and just get him some work. I, yeah, I mean. It, what, but nothing can change right now, right, the, though, with the, the playoff position? I mean, the, you have nothing to lose. Here's the counterpoint to that. You put him in, and the guy gets destroyed. Yeah, yeah and then he has no then confidence what? if you do need him. Then yeah. what do you do? I mean, that's what I'm always worried about. But isn't, isn't that the possibility Kemper, in the playoff game when you need him, too? Well, yeah, you Kemper's know. such a head case. Maybe, yeah. but, I mean, at that point, I mean, you have no choice. I mean, at this point, like, why... Why mess with his confidence if you don't have to? But I mean, this one's less important, right? Hey, uh, Maybe you should find out if he's going to be still yeah. that, horrible. That's, I don't that's know. That's what I would do. And, and I mean, he's been back couple, from your play. You're back up in the play. Uh, no, 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 he doesn't. No, no. He doesn't set foot on the. Keep in the ice healthy. Over. We so we give up if, that, if, if we don't have that. So <laughs> right, I think there's yeah, probably yeah. there's probably a side but, agreement. The fact that like Kemper's well, crying himself to sleep every night. That's not going to do you any good. Which he basically does. But he's. He's the guy you're not going to buy out. So no. he's well, the one that you don't have to worry he's about. He's your backup next year. Yeah. 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 Well, I, know. I, I get that. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe if, he's, if he's so mentally fragile, maybe you want a veteran sitting on the bench. I don't know. Just a, just a thought. Just a thought. Hey, speaking of uh, uh, veterans and who's dressing and who's not, after two games of healthy scratch, Leopold back in the lineup last night. Uh, how do we think they're going to go? Which way are they going to go with this in the playoffs? I still think you want experience next to Dumba. I, 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 thought, I thought he played all right. And I yeah. think uh, didn't we see a, a, a switch up where they did put – Dumba up with uh, with Suter. And I mean, well, after after the play, and, and uh, they juggled a little bit against Winnipeg yeah. too. Yep. And so uh, and, and that's what I meant. I went, sorry, Winnipeg. When we saw that them just switch around a, th- yep. a little bit, a couple times. But I think uh, if it was me coaching, I would put I'd put the uh, the veteran in there. I mean, I I'm not a Prosser fan. I I've and said he, it. Yeah, and he has there. had a great run. He's had a great two three month run. I mean, you got to admit. I mean, he's gone. From I think Leopold has played well too, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, he's, and he's and he does have the veteran presence. And yeah. and as as much as we love. Uh, you know uh, how, how electric Dumba is from a skill standpoint. He is still a kid, and, yep. he, and he and he is prone to getting a little too aggressive. Yeah, and then you, and you really got to be careful in the playoffs. I mean, that's, you gotta, where, you that's where I think you're right. I think it does it, it does uh, really uh, help him. I think to have uh, or compliment him to have somebody who does have veteran, you know, stay at home presence on you know on his line. Even somebody who went to Armstrong. I mean, somebody, <laughs> but somebody that basically can can allow him to maybe uh, you know. Go and jump into the you know into the offense and and, and go uh, you know get into that rush without having to be worried about is somebody going to be all right to you know to back me up here. So that, if it was me, I, I think Leopold from here on out. I mean, we'll see. Hey, it's been a fun show, uh, Ben. Thanks for coming again. Yeah, if people, people want to read your stuff. Where do they find you? I'm at Wild X Trail. I'm at Gone Puck Wild, and uh, I retweet all my stuff at uh, on Twitter at Ben Remington. Perfect. Scott Schweitz at PenthouseForum.com. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I'm Jeff Dubay. I don't write on the internet at all. I do a lot of stuff on the internet. I don't write on it. Uh, Jeff Dubay, Wild Wednesday. Thanks to Bennett's Chopping Real House. Stop in. Check them out. What's up?